How's it going guys? My name is Andreas and today I'm going to be talking about pot limit on my strategy from the button. Now, if you haven't seen my other videos about Under the Gun, MP and Cutoff, go ahead and do watch them because there's some other concepts that I'm not gonna repeat in this video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about particularly what you should watch out for when on the button, you know, the fact that you're in position all the time and look at two hand histories. Now, first of all, you want to watch out what the combined 3 bet frequency of the blinds is. Now, if you have the small blind 3 betting at 15% and the button 3 betting at 15%, a hand like ace check 9 3 suited to the ace might not be such a successful steal anymore. Sure, your equity against such a wide 3 bet range is going to be fine, but the constant threat of your opponent's top of their, of their ranges is actually quite detrimental to that particular hand. Even if your opponent three bets, you know, hands that you know you make better two pairs against, for example, check to nine, seven, double suited, you might make some higher two pairs. However, it's still not going to be good for you because those scenarios where you dominate parts of their range, maybe also your nut flusher dominates their um, check high 10 9 flush draw that's you know offset by the times your opponent actually does have the aces um, which is still quite a lot even though you have the ace blocker and in those scenarios you will do quite poorly so if the three bet ranges combined are high you want to shy away from the worst of your holdings that you're opening on the button now the other stat is also important and that is how often in particular the big blind is defending and how often he's folding. If his fold to steal is anywhere around 80%, you can open a lot more hands even if you get three by the bunch. Because when you open for three and a half blinds, you win one and a half blinds quite a bunch, especially if the big blinds are folding a lot. If the small blinds also not cold calling that much, then you can go ahead and steal those one and a half big blinds quite some time. But you want to do it with hands that preferably can call three bets because if you raise a hand and fold to a three bet, you lose three and a half big blinds. And that's more than double what you gain if they both fold, which is one and a half big blinds gain. Now, one of the good things is when it comes to post flop, you're always in position. That means you can build a pot with, you know, components of your hand such as a nut flush or nut flush draw that can bet over multiple streets. So you're going to decide when the bet goes in or when three bets goes, uh, go, go in. If your opponent's also not leading too much on some boards, you know, you can always take a free card and check behind on the flop. And that means you can control the size of the pot and this is going to be, you know, a major advantage throughout the hand. And you're never going to be in that disadvantage position that you cannot value bet because you're out of position. Because, yeah, you always can bet, put that value bet in on the river. Uh, and you don't have to worry about protecting your checking range like the out of position player does. So this is why the button win rates should be much higher than all the other positions. And the third thing I want to talk about is basically the two hand histories that I selected here. And I can show you rather quickly what I selected. So here I got the 10, 9, 6, 5. Let's go through the things that I talked about at the beginning. Um, we see the Vought D88 um, guy here in the big blind. He doesn't three that much. So far it's 2%. Uh, his CPIP is low, but more importantly, his versus button fold is 78% so far. Um, overall, it seems like a tight player, so we go on and steal a 10, 9, 6, 5. Also, the small blind, um, 3 bets a reasonable amount, but doesn't um, seem, you know, to be crazy um, about... He seems to be defending, for example, always against a small blind steal, so he's somewhat positionally aware when it comes to that. He cold calls and we get 3 bet. And this is really one of the scenarios, it's even worse when you get squeezed uh, than when you get 3 bet, because if you call here, um, which I ended up doing, then you know the pot is gonna be bloated, it's gonna be $42, we invested quite some more, and he has an SPR of two, so if he has aces or you know anything reasonable, he can go with it on a flop, and look at our suit, a 10 high suit here is gonna be quite dangerous because we're playing against two players and when we flop a 10 I flush and a pair 
and then someone has an over pair and a flusher or you know one of them has a pair and they both go all in and one of them has the better flusher we're dominated and our equity you know suffers a lot here we do go ahead and bet because we have bottom two pair i think i was sizing it down to go out if they both move in but um, i could just also see committing bet as being okay here with the bottom two pair but um, like this, also, if the turn's a king or an ace, I can easily get away from the hand, I guess. Maybe not an ace, but on a king. So we go in on a turn, and he shows up the ace, king, ten, three, double suited, you know, indicating that, yeah, he is a tight three better, and we just ran against a very good hand. However, very, very marginal spot, you know, and folding in the end might just be much better, given... Um, that when these scenarios occur that they threw bit, etc., then it's going to be quite bad. Here, the 10, 9, 8, 4 single suited. I also raise and I got 3 bet. And also, here, a thousand hands is a pretty good sample and reliable that he's going to 3 bet, you know, all premium hands. And with this hand, again, 10, I flush. So the 10, 9, 8 is kind of good, but a lot of the times on, you know, equity driven boards, when we, for example, flop at 10 then we know we're committed to call one bet and you know we're going to be dominated with you know our flusher portion when they have a better flusher like about 20 25 percent of the time um when we do hit here we actually felt quite great we have a pair and a flusher and a gotcha so this is not really the most troublesome flop in general um here i would actually also see moving in as as just okay i don't know why um, I just called, but I guess also on the turn, we're usually doing fine, but this time maybe he just had it. Let's have a look. He had the king, king, queen, nine, you know, for, you know, for the turn we are doing fine, but look at the preflop. Um, I can just quickly show you that in the options here. Show the known cards, go back to preflop. Look at how brutal we're dominating by a premium hand like King, King, Queen, Nine, Double Suit. We're at 28%. So we were not even getting the right price against this exact hand. Sure, against Aces, we were going to do fine. But as soon as the, you know, the clubs are dominated and, you know, he interferes also with the straights that um, is possible for us to make, then the hand gets so much weaker. And you want to be careful in these scenarios when you know, face super tight, super strong three bet ranges, double suited kings, a lot of good aces. Sometimes they're just cold calling with the normal aces. And you want to be, you know, very careful that you don't get into a blow the pot with, you know, danglers like the four here against premium holdings. As soon as you face wider ranges, then, you know, they cannot also put on the heat nearly as much after the flop. They're gonna have some similar hands in yours, but um, yeah, it gets better because they have less aces that they can, you know, put on a lot of heat when the board's disconnected in favor of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on if you want to know when the content's coming out next. What is up next is playing explains and some more um, complex spots in Potlip in Omaha. When I have an interesting spot, I will let you guys know in my next videos coming up. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's all in the description below. There's also some content up there. Thanks for watching. This has been Andreas Furley. See you next time.